Hey, before the video begins, I just wanted to let you know, since most of you may be new to the channel, uh, I did make a video on One Night at Flumpty's, or at least the series in it itself. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I'd highly suggest go doing that. There is an icon in the top right corner, or you could not click it and watch this video instead. Thanks and enjoy the video. So, Day Shift at Freddy's. You know, out of all of the fan games in this series, I feel really guilty for not playing Day Shift at Freddy's. I didn't even bother playing it back in 2020 when FNAF had its, well, kind of resurgence into popularity. And considering that, well, skipping Day Shift at Freddy's is like an unforgivable sin, I've decided that in the year of 2022, I'm going to repent for thy sins and gain my wings as I ascend to the heavens finally, and finally cover these games. Now yes, I am going to be covering every single one in the series, so that's Day Shift 1, 2, and 3, all in one video. Now these are considered to be some of the better fan games out there, so I hope what I'm getting into is really, really good. It does have a little bit of a cult following, so... Also, I should probably mention that the series was created by Direct Doggo, and you should totally buy Dial Town on Steam. It's only like $8, so uh, go and buy that. That's all I have to say for, well, right, right now. I'll see you all at the end of the video. Day Shift 1 is, well, the first one. The game is made in RPG Maker, but it's more of a visual novel where there are multiple endings. Something like Henry Stickman, if you will. So for the sake of myself and everyone watching this video right now, I won't go in depth with every ending. I'll go in depth with the ones I found to be fun or interesting. So you play as an orange guy, and you were recently hired by Freddy Fazbender's Pepperonery. Hold on to your dookie! It's about to get spooky! You are tasked with doing daily chores at Freddy's. The game itself doesn't take itself very seriously, so there's a lot of old outdated memes, like, I'm not joking, the title doesn't lie, this series is just a shitpost. You can do random things like play arcade games and just interact with the environment, and really that's about it. I head to, into the safe room and it's here you meet Purple Guy. He talks to you about an offer, he wants to leave this place but can't because of a contract that you had to sign. So you can either kill five kids or refuse his offer. So for this playthrough specifically, I went for the gnarly ending. So I accepted Purple Guy's offer. You need to put on the Springlock suit, which is apparently the cool cat, and the other one being some old serial mascot that I can't remember. You also have to make sure the Springlocks don't fail, so you have to click these springs that will appear on your screen. After that, you're basically free to roam around the pizzeria. You can interact with the animatronics, like change Freddy's music box to Rickroll the guests. I think the most fun of this game really just comes from the veils, like Henry Stickman. It's fun to see how you character ends up getting fired or die. Or like, for instance, I decided to tell some jokes to children and I got fired because of a squirrel joke. This playthrough, I didn't exactly engage with the game. I just did whatever Purple Guy asked me to do and just did it. Tuesday, you have to escort the bodies out to the dumpster. Wednesday, you need to destroy the security cameras. Then on Thursday, you have to choose which animatronic gets to set loose on in the joint. Either Bread Bear or the Rat on Friday. On my run, I chose both animatronics. The building miraculously catches on fire, and both you and the purple guy are free to go to Vegas as you please. So for this playthrough, I decided to get the happiest ending, which requires you to save the five dead children. You need to refuse Dave's offer first. It was here I actually decided to experience the game in its full entirety. You know, get fired for devouring Chica's hot bird ass. Or alternatively, you could ye foxy. I also served pizza with Bonnie's face, and served pizza with cat turds. You can also get fired for eating salad. Yeah, eating salad gets you fired. What a world. I took a look at the security cameras and found Dave stealing from the prize corner. Or an old man who found the camera. Pretty hilarious. You can also randomly encounter a dog. I also played one of the mini games, being the Bread Bear one. It's just a vertical shooter like Space Invaders. There's another one called Foxy Yif Yif Yif. I think I'll pass. Then the Happiest Day game, which is only to show your progress in saving the children. I should probably talk about how exactly you go about saving the children. Chica and Bonnie are quite easy. I actually managed to get them without even realizing it at first. 
You'll probably get them, honestly, in the first two days. Chica needs a pepperoni pizza, and Bonnie needs his face back, and Freddy, I also did this one afterwards, but he needs to rickroll the guests in order to save him. Foxy and Golden Freddy need a little bit more grinding. You see, there's a character called Matt at the prize corner who will sell you stuff, and you probably notice the tokens in the bottom right. Yeah, this is like your primary currency, and honestly, it's fine. You don't really need to do it in the first days, because to get them, you just simply search around areas, and it's like, you may find one or two of them, and then sometimes you'll get a lot, sometimes you'll get not much. And you need to do this in like three days. Yeah, you need to do all of this in like the progress of like three whole days, so it, it, it's pretty tough. So for Foxy, you need to break the salad bar with a crowbar. So you need to purchase a crowbar, and that is, I believe, 150 tokens. So it's not much, but the most expensive thing is the firecracker. Uh, unless I'm wrong about that, then oopsie daisy, it's just the other way around. So yeah, you need around like 500 tokens in order to get the, the good ending, quote unquote. Honestly, this ending, like I said, it's not really that worth it. Oh yeah, Golden Freddy, you need to set off the firecracker that you bought in a urinal. And also make sure you play the Happiest Day game after you do all that to ensure you get the ending. They just play the game as normal and we make it to the end. I should also mention that there are like post-night minigames that sort of give a little bit of lore building. It's not much to be honest, like the first one, first you put hats on the dead kids and then after that you put them into the animatronics which possess them seal off a safe room or whatever and yada 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 it's just stuff like that not really much to be said with these just that they exist and by the way the phone guy is actually called scott Cawthon because scott Cawthon actually voices the phone guy in the games just Thought that was pretty cool. So he sets up a sting operation to try and arrest you. This is common among all of the endings. Dave will send either Breadbear or the rat. Uh, usually for the good ending, you want the rat to show up. And then out of the blue, I never even expected this, Fredbear shows up. And this isn't like Fredbear like you'd expect it to look like. He's some kind of godly being. And by godly being, I mean being a PNG of a grizzly bear photoshopped to look kind of like Fredbear. And he has a text-to-speech voice, which just makes it even more goofy. So does God have a text-to-speech voice or something? I don't know. I mean, honestly, that'd be kind of funny if that were the case. But anyway, he just tells you to leave and then you get fired only to have cake with the dead children. I mean, it's a fairly bittersweet ending because the kids just talk like, oh, we're going to be dead forever. We're just going to be stuck in the void. It just feels so bittersweet. The only ending that I actually really enjoyed here at the time I was playing was the gnarly ending. Really, for the other endings, you just have to sort of screw up in a run, and that's how you usually get them. I'll talk about this more in the conclusion, but this will actually wrap up Day Shift at Freddy's 1, at least for right now. Honestly, looking back, Day Shift at Freddy's 1 is a, well, fine game. I think for its time it probably would have been really good, but over the past couple of years it's kind of like Flumpty's 1, it's just sort of aged like milk, and that's really about it. Most of the endings in this game aren't exactly really worth it, as I've already said. You just have to really screw up to get most of them anyway, so, I don't know. Probably one issue I actually have with the game, yes, I actually have issues with this. I don't really like the jokes. I mean, I like the jokes, they're pretty funny, it's just, like, on a second playthrough, like, you know, because it feels like it's designed to be, you know, having a game for a second playthrough, the jokes get old very quickly, and there's hardly any variety with the jokes, because most of them are just really, you know, just outdated dead memes or something. That, however, being my, well, really own main issue, other stuff like, you know, the whole shot being kind of underutilized and yada yada yada, I didn't want to bring up in this one because, you know, when it really comes down to it, the community of Day Shift at Freddy's all kind of agrees that one is the least interesting one of the bunch, and that two and three are definitely the better ones, so since we're finally done with Day Shift 1, let's finally talk about Day Shift at Freddy's 2. So, Day Shift at Freddy's 2. 
Yep, it's definitely an improvement. This time I went for four endings, well, to be honest, I went for three, but got the other two on accident, so technically actually five endings now. I'll talk about them, so for this run I went for the pure evil ending, but it's called an ending. I'll just refer to it as the pure evil ending for the rest of the video. Once again, we are hired by the phone guy this time, being a different phone guy who just happens to be named Scott Cawthon. And for the first day, we just sort of get to explore a little bit and see what things you can do. Obviously, at this point, I know what to expect from these games, so I usually spend the time just gathering some money to buy some of Matt's wares. Matt also returns in this game. After that, the day is done. It's revealed that it's a test day and the grand opening is actually tomorrow despite the images chosen imply that the restaurant is actually open. Whatever. We also get those post-night cutscenes, but they seem to be telling a story of their own. Something regarding the Nightman. They talk about the Nightman cometh, I'm assuming that's like the Night Watchman or something. We play as Withered Freddy and make our way towards the security office and get jumped by the Nightman. And the cutscene ends the next day is when we get to go down Storytown and choose a route. So this time, there's three routes you can choose. There's the purple guy route, or Dave. There's the puppet route, like last time, and now the phone guy. So for this ending, I went for Dave and lured some of the kids in the back. And this is also the game where they actually use his iconic theme. You know, the Rugrats PS1 theme. Yeah, that one. I'll talk about more about Dave when I talk about Day Shift 3. I feel like it's more fitting if I talk about him there as opposed to here, but eh, whatever. Anyway, we sold to the kids and that's pretty much the entire day. Also, the phone guy will talk to us at the end of the day. Obviously, for Dave's route, he's gonna get fairly upset that we've done most of this stuff, so... The next day arrives, and we now need to tamper with the toy animatronics while Dave deals with the ones in the back. Since this task is actually really easy, I wanted to actually talk about some of the things that can randomly happen instead. So they actually, or well, at least the developer of this game, decided to add some more random events that can randomly occur during your playthrough. They decided to actually fit in some of the other fan games, such as Candies and... Pop goes to some extent as well, so randomly someone in a candy suit will attempt to kill you in the restaurant. So in order to stop them, you need to taser the man with the taser you can get from Matt, who returns in this game. Also, Stone the Crow from Pop Goes is also here, and the infamous Alas, This is a Pop Goes promotion also appears in this game as well. It's not just that you can do, you can also log into the com company computer and watch YouTube. <laughs> You can make a comment on the Day Shift at Freddy's 2 game job page. You can even look at the Five Nights at Freddy's subreddit and cause it to actually die. Like, actually make a Reddit post, apparently so bad, that it causes the entire Reddit website itself to implode. Which, let's be honest, is probably the best thing Old Sport has really ever done. You can yiff the fox again. Don't. You can even do what everyone's always wanted to do since Five Nights at Freddy's 2, and that's throw a balloon boy out of a window, which causes the kids to kick Toy Freddy's shins in. There's a lot more stuff to this game, so I won't exactly spoil anything else. I want you guys to experience this game for what it has to offer yourself, so I'll go play it, I guess. Anyways, we finally get all the animatronics tampered with, and that ends the day. Phone Guy at the end of the day realizes that we're up to something, and now has an eye on what we're doing here. We obviously head home, expecting to see Dave tomorrow, but when we arrive, Dave is gonna be late. He seems to be caught up in something, so we get to spend the day to ourselves until closing time. So for this, just do whatever you want. When Dave finally arrives, you now have to rig the Spring Freddy suit because tomorrow there is a party and you want the janitor, Jimbo, to be that victim. You also crack open a beer with Dave and actually, Dave decides to tell you some backstory behind the Day Shift at Freddy's universe. This is more lore tidbits and there's a lot more lore actually in this game present than the first one. So I'll go over as much as I can. So Dave obviously isn't his real name, it's actually William Afton. He used to own Fred Bears and it was his dream job. He had a partner called Henry Miller and they were basically partners in crime, they both killed children. Until Henry passes away, leaving William all by himself and Fred Bears was eventually bought up by Fazbear Entertainment which filled him with such grief. So he wanted revenge to try and get Freddy's to go out of business permanently so that he can 
be victorious, I guess. You know, they ruin his hopes and dreams and all of that. Once finished, putting Silly Putty in the suit, you go home and purposefully don't set your clock, leave for the party, and watch Jimbo die. Phone Guy finally knows what's up and confronts you and actually fires you. You then go to Dave and it's here we get the choice of either to tamper with Balloon Boy or Foxy. So for the pure evil ending, you have to choose Balloon Boy. So I chose BB in this sense, so, and then you finally go home and you get to some sleep. The next day you wake up, and Dave apparently has come in your own home and he's looking all sleep deprived. He calls up Phone Guy for some really weird prank call, and you head up to the pizzeria to actually fight the Phone Guy, despite the fact you're not actually supposed to be here. Just enough time to get, you know, Dave to come out and divert Phone Guy to the party room, where in the pure evil ending, I chose Balloon Boy, and Balloon Boy's about to kill Mike Jr., and he does so, but before you can head out to Las Vegas and have a good old grand time, a familiar voice stops you, that being uh, the real Fredbear, you know, from the first game, and he has a bone to pick with you because of a promise that apparently Jack had made. And yeah, by the way, his name's Jack. Yeah, kind of my fault because I don't think you're really supposed to go to the sending, and I didn't really know what the hell was going on with the story at the time, so... It felt a little weird, but hey, at least it's something. So you actually fight real Fredbear, and eventually Jack actually snaps, and causes Fredbear to just lose the will to fight, and you know, it's, he just feels stupid because he couldn't even save one child. After defeating Fredbear, Dave actually gets creeped out, and that causes the pure evil ending. You still go to Vegas, it's just Dave gets creeped out by Jack. And that would be the end, but actually, if you actually play any other game or use any other save file, you actually keep that grin, and Jack is the permanent name, so uh, the Jack sort of comes back to you, and you can even threaten Dave as well. It's... I don't know why the game just went full-on Undertale on me, but honestly, I kind of like it. It's pretty cool. Then let's obviously talk about the fairly evil ending. To get this ending, you simply need to choose Foxy, and instead of being played in old sports perspective, it's Phone Guy's perspective. We fight Dave this time, and then we die to Nightmare Foxy, who's looking really unappealing to the sum of everyone unless you're a furry then probably not. Obviously, the last ending I got here was the gnarly, well, in this case, it's this version of the gnarly ending called the radical ending. The exact same thing as the pure evil ending, but just without going the gnarly path. I went, I chose the mediocre ending this time, and yeah, it's this one where you and Dave just get to have a nice time at Vegas together. That's pretty much all there is for the Dave routes, and yeah, I'm not joking, I went for every single Dave route in this game, which, you know, that probably says something a lot more about me as a person at this point, but hey, what can I say, Dave's a great character. Finally, I decided to get the perfect ending. You see, there's two versions of this ending. There's the true and obviously perfect ending. I went for the perfect because you actually get a secret epilogue cutscene, and to get this, all you need to do is just name the orange character, Jack. Then decline Dave's offer and do both Fungi and the puppet's tasks. And don't worry, it's not like super tedious or anything. The puppet's tasks are exactly the exact same as the first game. It's just the Fungi you're going to be doing a little bit more stuff with. And that's it. Actually, while trying to get this ending, I managed to accidentally get the premature ending like, on complete accident. Uh, all you have to do is just tell the puppet that Dave's about to kill some children and you'll get it. So, to save the kids after they die, like I said, it's exactly the same as the first one. You just need to do some tasks in order to save them. I actually managed to get all the tasks done in on the same day. So, yeah, I think it's a little easier than last time, considering you get an entire day just to grind out for Faz tokens, but, uh, for instance, so, yeah. Uh, Toy Freddy needs a hug. Toy Bonnie needs his guitar back. Uh, Toy Chica, you need to ask her what she wants, but she wants all the prawn deleted from a specific computer folder gone. Mangle needs to be fixed, and Balloon Boy needs some batteries. That's all you really need to do, so... 
just you'll probably do it in the first day so the, the first attempt anyway so. phone guy needs help uh, to try and keep the business going. So first you need to go around and spray all the animatronics, the toy animatronics with this aerosol, which makes them not smell like dead body. And also don't forget once you're done saving everyone, make sure you go back to the puppet and do that whole thing. And you're basically done with the puppet's tasks. You don't have to do anything else for like the rest of the game. You just focus on phone guy. So for the second part of the plan, you need to actually rig Dave's suit and get him killed. It's also here we get a little more story development with the phone guy this time. There seems to be something pretty dark going on with these phone people. It turns out they're once people, but surgically have their heads removed and replace them with a phone. And they just sort of men in black their memory so they just forget who they are yeah the reason he calls himself scott Cawthon is because they literally told him that his like they gave him the family photo of the phone guy from the last game his actual name is peter and uh we'll talk about peter in the next game it's actually pretty depressing if you really think about it and it's gonna get even more depressing in the third game because there's something really important that you probably should know but i can't really say it because it's in the third game and we're covering the second one, so. If they fail to keep the restaurant afloat, then the phone people are just killed. Like, they don't, like, reuse them, they just, like, straight up backhand them and just kill them off for good. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty dark stuff, if I'm being completely honest. And speaking of, I actually prefer this phone guy over the first one. See, that first one just, I could give a shit about him. He was terrible, he, he literally framed me, he's a piece of poo-poo. But this one just, Honestly, it just hurts me, because like, I just feel bad for this character. Genuinely, I feel so bad for him. The next day, you bait Dave in the suit, and he slowly dies in the suit, and finally, someone acknowledges the name being a trap for the purple guy, a spring trap. The day ends with the phone guy telling us that we're free to go, and tears up our contract in a really sweet way. Upsets me that there's no saving this guy, he's just gonna end up dead. Before we move on to the final day, let's quickly go over some lore stuff. So it's revealed that Jack was killed in a Fredbear suit, and he begs for help, and Henry just leaves him there to die. Fredbear offers to give us life. In return, we fulfill our promise of saving all the dead children that both Dave and Henry are about to go after. There's not really much else, uh, that's really all I managed to gather. If there's anything else, uh, it'll probably be talked about in day shift 3, so. So, the final day. Instead of the final day being you fighting Phone Guy, you're only here as a guest and you just want to hang out with Phone Guy and just have a nice talk with him. Yeah, I really like this friendship. It's just a nice one. And then all of a sudden, Dave comes out of the, uh, the safe room because it was boarded up the other night. Oh well, in this case he's called Dave Trap. But then the real Fredbear steps in and you fight Dave and destroy him once and for all. The real Fredbear tells us thanks and we join the puppet and watch the kids as, as they ascend into the heavens. This ending is really bittersweet. The kids all get to move on all except Jack who has to stay behind despite being a rotten corpse. Who was only brought to life just to save children and died at the hands of Henry or Dave. You leave the area, which concludes Day Shift 2 with the true ending. But hold on, not done. There's one thing I wanted to talk about, and it's, you know, the, the story with the post-night cutscene minigames or whatever they are. Uh, this one is a bit weird, because now Withered Freddy becomes the Dayman in, like, some really weird alter ego superhero section. He just sort of becomes the Dayman, he fights the Nightman, and that that's that's really about it. Yeah, it's just a really silly story, nothing really else to say there. But that's actually gonna be doing it for Day Shift at Freddy's 2, at least for right now. I'll see you all when I cover Day Shift 3. So really looking back at Day Shift 2, this one brings a lot to the table compared to the first. I'd definitely say out of the two of these games, Day Shift 2 is definitely better than 1. A lot more funnier jokes, instead of just relying on dead memes like the first game. Uh, this game's probably the one you want to be playing, and probably not the first one. Improves on everything, whilst adding new additions that feel interesting and fresh. And also fleshing out the world just a little bit more. I had a lot more satisfaction when completing the, the true ending of the game. It felt really good. So, well, uh, we still have one more game to look at. Let's see if Day Shift 3 can actually top Day Shift at Freddy's 2.
All right, finally, Day Shift 3. Now, compared to its predecessor, this one puts a lot more focus on its story than its humor. In my opinion, this game isn't as funny as 2, but the story makes up for it. This game has a lot more to offer than the other two games. You still have the Day Shift portions. Now there's Tycoon sections, and which is honestly just much better than FNAF 6. Uh, then you have the flip side sections. Alright, let's talk endings first of all. I only felt like going for one this time around, and that being the good ending, or the true ending, whatever you want to call it. The first two segments are more tutorial-like, so you won't really get that experience of normal day shift stuff until day two. So you wear your little costume and take cake to the children. Later after closing, it's revealed that a child was abducted right outside your restaurant after it opened up. It's also here where you get to pick your name, so obviously I went with Jack Kennedy. The offer tells us just to keep an eye out and we jump to a location nearby. Uh, this is a salvaging section. This is where you salvage some animatronics from older locations and then you head back to your establishment to deliver them. You can only take one back, so choose wisely. After choosing or choosing to not get anything, you head back to Colorado to do the aforementioned flip side sections. Also, quick side note, how the hell does Jack get from LA to Colorado so quickly? That's like a 15 hour drive. Anyways, uh, we head inside Peter's old home, and it turns out Peter passed away along with his wife, Caroline. Uh, they were in the Day Shift 2 epilogue cutscene, if you recall that long ago. We head into the flip side. So literally two rooms above, we meet Dave. This Dave, however, isn't actually an evil son of a bitch, and is instead a soul that hasn't moved on. See, the flip side is a place where lost souls gather. It's taken the form of various Freddy's locations, and like before, Jack has made a promise to save all the dead kids that were victims of Henry or William. The soul of William is a more reasonable side of him, aka the side that everyone likes about this character. The more feral side, as he puts it, is definitely still out there, so Dave wants to accompany us on our saving the kids journey, and we now have Dave as an ally. I like actually going and interacting with most of the stuff, because Dave always has something interesting to say. He has his own opinions on Freddy's animatronics. He talks about his past when Fred Bears was still around, or when he was working at the other diners under the name Dave. I found those dialogue moments to be the funniest thing in the game thus far. Uh, Dave really has a lot of good things to say. You need to find Dave's lunchbox, which is apparently the FNAF 4 box. Oh, and uh, head to the security office for your first boss fight. And yep, uh, there's a little bit more RPG-centric stuff than previous games, but don't get your hopes up. The max level is three, and you'll get it incredibly easily on your first night. The enemies don't exactly get more challenging the further you progress. You do get new moves, and apparently Dave's next move at level two is stupid. It's a 33% chance to insta-kill, May not sound like much, but Game & Watch has a 1 in 9 chance to hit a 9. Dave is a 1 in 3 chance to insta-kill. The odds are cracked in Dave's favor. Looks like going to Vegas did pay off after all. Our first boss is Golden Freddy. Take him out and we have our first I feel really bad moment. Turns out the spirit you just fought was the same kid who got abducted outside your restaurant on opening day. Jack has a heart-to-heart -heart moment with the kid and convinces them to move on onto the afterlife. Dave once again warns us about about his feral side and we tell him to prepare a plan and head out of the flip side to return in a month's time to save the next soul. So the next tycoon section is where the real stuff begins because now we have our own phone guy. Now you can actually mess around with your pizzeria now if you wish. Once you're done with adding stuff to your pizzeria, you walk out and open up and return in a month's time to see the progress. This is where the actual day shift stuff happens. Surprisingly, most of this game is made up of flip side segments. Honestly, the actual day shift part have the least amount of screen time. So for this run, I wanted to help out the phone guys as much as I could. So for the first one, you need to ask your phone guy about his past, then once he's done, you need to call after robotics, then someone called Phone Girl will tell you Harry's history. Then you need to call Harry, ask him about it, and he will tell you the origin of the five managers. Yeah, it gets real tragic. The five managers were all killed in horrible accidents and were treated like crash test dummies. Uh, Joe died in a spring lock accident, Terence died by getting crushed from an elevator, probably the really most gruesome one here. Then Everett got tore up by Freddy, and then the guy in the middle of the photo, his name being Abel, was shoved into an old phone, like, yeah, that old phone, while he was alive. 
because Joe remembered what happened and got really mad because of it. Over the course of these games, the foam guys have really become more tragic characters, honestly. I just can't help but feel bad that they even have to work at these joints in the first place and basically have their own past lives sacrificed just to appease the business world, I guess. After that, the phone guy whose name is Harry goes back to work. I just search the dining room till 6pm and that ends the day. Jack now heads to the Utah location to salvage parts, this being the FNAF 1 location and it's here we meet Dave Trap, the feral side of Dave. Once again he has an offer for us this time, I declined it as since we're doing the good ending and went straight back home. He does follow us home, weirdly enough. Uh, and I decide to continue saving souls in the flip side. So this flip side segment, there's a new soul Dave found, and it's a layer down. This layer is based around Five Nights 2, and the, you fight the toy animatronics. In this layer, we need to help D, the puppet from the last two games, and turns out that the, the puppet is actually Jack's sister, and fights us because Dave is helping us out. It's here Dave actually reveals more about his past to us. He was an orphan, and no one wanted to adopt an aubergine man, so he ran away until he found a circus, and Henry was the one running it until it got shut down, then decided to start running a restaurant business, that being Fredbear's. I'll talk about it more a little in-depth later. For now, however, we say goodbye to Dave and Dee, and head back into reality for another shift at Freddy's. So I decided to replace the old phone guy with a new one, don't worry he's not gonna die, he simply just wants to retire from his position. Uh, now we get a purple phone with a faulty voice box, his name is Jake Wilson. And yes, you can have a really deep and tragic conversation with him. Yay! So this time, Jake talks to you about discovering his past life and realizing that he used to have a son called Jason. So he abandoned Freddy's in hopes of finding him, and he did find him, but he was all grown up and had his own family. Realizing what he, what Jake had become, couldn't bear to show up into his son's life again, not to mention he managed to grow up without his dad's presence, so he feels like a pretty bad person. Jack tells him that he was a good dad and tells him that his son misses him a lot and that he should go back and see him again. Also on this day, the health inspector arrives, isn't as cool as the last one, but you can basically bribe him into setting up his son's birth birthday party at no expense of course. Anything to keep this lousy restaurant afloat I guess. Dave also shows up, Dave Trap I mean, in the back room in order to attempt again with his offer. We decline and that ends our activities for today. We this time drive to the Colorado location from day shift 1. How nostalgic. I grab Bonnie and leave. This flip side section is a little different because now we have to save the phone guy from the first game, you know, the one that framed us. So we need to fight two waves of foxies along with Dee, she joined our party and is a healer kind of character. Also we can see Dave react to things and Dee will occasionally step in. Kind of funny seeing these two characters bicker. We then fight the phone guy who thinks we're here for revenge at the Colorado location. I mean to be fair, I would kick his shins in for framing me for killing kids and making me dance in front of a police midget with a mask on. We fight the phone guy and like D, strike up a conversation because that's how we solve all of our problems because apparently we're now Steven Universe characters. And we learn that the first phone guy is actually named Steven and he was knocked out by Henry and put inside a Freddy suit and died due to a spring lock failure. He was sent to the Afton Robotics factory where his head was replaced with a, you know, a phone. A phone guy feels like a massive bitch for treating his employees like shit and suggests that he shouldn't be saved, but we force him into it because I hate him. Then they need to plan to find the next soul to save, so we quickly make our way back to reality in order to prepare for our restaurant. So I once again decided to replace the purple phone guy with a new one, an orange one called Roger. We open up and return in a month's time. Roger is a bit nervous as a phone guy and later we find out that he was a failure in life, had a divorce and he was an alcoholic. Ever since then, his head was turned into a rotary phone and had a second chance and nowhere to go. He's really afraid of screwing up because obviously he's afraid of going back to that old life. He can't exactly be convinced to abandon his job, so he'll just stick around for now. More importantly, at the end of the day, a party is currently happening here, and there's a small situation at the end of the day. The child isn't here, so you both decide to go looking for that child, only to find him with Dave trapped in the safe room and trying to convince him not to kill the kid, until the parents realize what's going on and help gang up on Dave Trap. 
Uh, Jack does some speech about how Dave is outnumbered, so Dave stops and leaves the restaurant. There's no salvaging to be done today, you just go straight to the next flip side part. It's here where we learn that the phone guy from the last game, Peter, Jack's brother, is also stuck in the flip side, and we need to, one, find out why, and two, save him. This layer is incredibly messed up, you find glitched animatronics this time. We then meet up with Peter and find out that it was a trap, and we have gone too deep into the flip side, but it's here we meet that shadow doggo that felt like a jab at the two shadow animatronics that had no development at all. This dog is actually Jack's stray saw called Blackjack, and has kept Henry Miller in the void ever since his death. Jack needs to convince him to stop this and assures him that they will deal with Henry soon enough. Black Jack and Peter are now a part of your party, but before you deal with Henry, you need to take care of Dave Trap, so you head to the plan of reality and go back to your establishment. Roger has boarded everything up and talks about how good it was to work with you, then leaves with the other two phone guys you replaced earlier. Phone guys gotta stick together, I guess. After Roger leaves, Dave Trap shows up with more trap spirits and locks the door in an attempt to kill Jack, but his plan was to burn Dave once and for all by taking himself out. Quickly he is taken back to the flip side to finally take on Henry Miller in the void. This boss isn't exactly hard to be honest, but then again, none of the fights were hard per se. You need to destroy the eye things around him, and this is where the whole Dave having a third chance to insta-kill something really comes in handy. Henry is also capable of literally insta-killing your party by telling some cold hard truth about them. Until only Jack is left, in which he can't be hurt by Henry, because he's already lost everything and has nothing else to lose. Which revives everyone in the party, which ends the fight. Some really nice illustrations, and Henry is finally dead. And everyone can finally move on to the afterlife, one by one. The two phone guys, then D, saying goodbye. And then finally, we have to say goodbye. To Dave. Saying goodbye to Dave is real hard, you know. Over the course of these three games, I have noticed something about this character. Dave is, honestly, without a shadow of the doubt, uh, the best interpretation of William Afton, period. Look, I know I don't like the video that basically gave me a platform, but since there's a theming of moving on, I need to confront this video head on. Instead of ignoring it for the rest of my life, we're doing this right here, right now. I'm gonna do a little mini analysis on Day Shift at Freddy's version of William Afton. So Afton in Day Shift is a very sinister character, but with a side of silliness. In Day Shift 1, he's fairly sinister, but in the sequel, he's a little bit more goofy, of course, with his iconic theme that is currently playing in the background. The threequel has still the same character, but just sort of split. The goofy side is in the flip side, and Dave Trap is the more sinister one being in reality. We learn a lot about William's past and how he was an unchosen orphan, went homeless, and then a neglected child. Henry was the only person William cared about, as obviously as a neglected child. Like, he was neglected as a child, and he still gave a shit about him. And he was completely unaware that killing children had any real unfortunate consequences. Uh, when Henry died and Fred Bez was sold, William changed his name to Dave Miller so he could keep doing what Henry would have wanted him to do. Seeing William redeem himself after the Vegas trips, all the fixes, all the Grand Canyons, really does bring a tear to my eye. This character is an utter weirdo, but we're all gonna miss him. Jack finally returns to the real world, only to nod at the real Fred Bear, and he nods in reply. Jack smiles as he finally burns to a crisp. We get a TV cutscene of the news documenting the fire, then cut to a picture of everyone's grave, next to each other, finally able to rest in peace. Looking back at Day Shift 3, it really is a fantastic game. Sure, I didn't find it to be as funny as some of the other games, but really the story more than makes up for it. And I do definitely feel bad for all the characters that have to go through some of these tragic stuff, because I actually find them quite amusing to deal with, especially Dave. I feel nothing but satisfaction with the ending, and honestly, like Flumpty 3, I don't want a sequel to that game, and I don't think we'll ever get one, so... We're safe on that end, at least. Honestly, if you really think about it, my opinion on Day Shift is kind of the same as, you know, Flumpty's. I think the first one's alright, but really the sequel and threequel are where it's at. Really glad I checked out these games, and well, you can definitely check these out too. They're literally free games. But, and I should probably also mention that Dial Town, yeah, that Dial Town, is currently 
$7.99 on Steam, you can go buy it like right now. It's it's pretty cheap. It's dirt cheap. Like just go just go buy it. It's really good. Trust me, you'll have a fun time. That, however, is all I wanted to show for today. So, if you want, consider subscribing. It helps out the channel immensely. Like the video, turn on notifications. You can follow me on my Twitter page. Uh, it's over there. Or you could join my Discord, and the link is in the description, and so is my Twitter, so you, you know you can follow it in case you can't read. Have a good day, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye! Alas, the next video is going to be a Pop Goes promotion.